Hello YouTube, new video. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to upload this same time. I've been lots of people saying uh, about the GUI program, which I already knew about, but thanks anyway for everyone that commented on that. Um, I actually got the first one, but a few problems, so I thought I'll wait. So I have waited for version 1.7, which this one does include installer and Cydia. So I thought I'd, I'd use it. You know, it's been updated, fixed the problems that were obviously apparent from the uh, the first version or two that have come out. Okay, so I tried it three times. The three times that I tried it, um, it wouldn't get my screen to go white, which is a completely different error that I've got from the other one. Um, that stage was usually quite easy. So I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, the proper way, and. Um, basically the same way that I've done it before. I'm not going to show how to put the files into where, but I'm just going to show you them in action. So I recovery, remember last time, got libusb installed, and these three files that you had to extract. Okay, Look at my other video for the beginning and then go on to this one. It's in better quality. I'm, I'm not going to go over the same repeats um, of getting these files and then renaming them. Okay, so then in Xpone, Make sure you've got the new folder from RS Lite, firmware bundle, here they are, paste, as you can see I've already got it in there. And that's from RS Lite into Xpone firmware bundles. And pretty much put the 2.2.1 um, uh, restore in there. And make sure you've got Visual C++ 2008 um, installed as well. Um, they only said about libUSB, but they say C++ now. Okay. So first things first is okay. So what we're going to do is go into uh, run cmd. This is our command prompt, and what we're going to do is copy this code. Um, it's changed a bit because if you go into my uh, i recovery and go to svn, you not svn, not i recovery, even one folder. Sorry, expone bundles and as you can see I have added installer so what I've done is into the code I have added from the uh, Cydia forward slash Cydia dot tar copy the bundles forward slash installer dot tar and make sure it's the tar file um, basically don't extract it whatever you do because it's already a TAR file don't extract it at all just leave it and put it in there okay so there we go make sure you've got it at the right way and put CD at the front and mine's documents and settings as I'm on XP. Okay, so I'm going to copy this whole code. Might have to do it one by one. Hope not. And there it goes, hashing, which um, would happen in the other one. And it should be hashing it and creating the custom firmware. As you can see, it's doing it there, so I'm going to come back in a few minutes' time. Okay, as you can see, uh, it is now done, and when it comes back with your document date or area, that means it's done, okay? So I'm going to leave this up, and move on to the next stage, so you can see it's the custom restore, called custom restore, and it's a bit smaller, at 282.980, okay? So that's ready to uh, to go on to the next stage. Okay, from here on in, as you can see, what I'm going to do next is to put in some uh, code to redirect this folder. As you can see, it's going to the Xpone folder. We don't want that to happen for the next stage, so what we're going to do is copy this, which is the, the area. Just change the top one from Xpone Win32 to the directory of your uh, iRecovery SVN. Simply go to iRecovery, that's on the desktop, SVN, and copy that. And remember to put CD at the front, space, C, full slash document settings, etc. Okay, so I'm going to paste that. CD, space, C, document settings, etc. SVN, press enter. Now, as you can see, the main folder is there. Okay, so I'm going to leave CMD. Cancel that. So now I'm going to have to <coughs> and put it into DFU mode. It should be off. I hope it's off. Not coming on. Okay, so then what you got to do to put it into um, to DFU mode is to hold power and home. 
then after 10 seconds release, count in your head, after 10 seconds release the power button and then keep holding on the home button for 15 to 25 seconds, something like that until it's recognized in iTunes but your screen should be black, okay? And this is the bit where it kind of brick it but, well semi brick it, which means that you can't turn it on and stuff like that, it will kind of like um, brick it as I've said, but it hasn't because this cannot brick your iPod, but um, yeah, it can't brick it, but you can think that it is. Many people have and went to restore and go, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it bricks it, so I'm restoring or something to that effect. Um, USB not recognized is a big problem as well. So I'm going to try this now and count in my head. Okay, so it made the sound of USB unrecognized. Now, now it's made the noise of USB recognized. And as you can see, it's well, as you can't see actually. Sorry, um, it's black screen, not doing anything. Turn volume, no, nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna hopefully it's working on iTunes. It should have popped up in iTunes, but if it doesn't open iTunes, just make sure and it should go enter recovery mode there it goes, ok so it has worked get rid of iTunes so now what we need to do is enter this code irecovery minus f and ibss211 dot dfu ok copy this code go into your your um, CMD Can I right click paste press enter Okay, so now it says closing USB connection. Okay, I'm glad to say that after it says closing USB connection, I unplugged my USB, plugged it back in after two seconds, and my screen went white. So somewhere between the program um, of using the uh, Cywood program and doing it manually yourself, there's a, a problem, and I don't know where it is.